This is a brief model demonstration of a piece of software called Prompt, which I've developed over a number of years now. Prompt is designed to be a bed and workforce capacity planning tool for hospitals. It's designed to be very user-friendly and uh, pretty generic, so in theory it can be picked up by any hospital. And in fact, it's being used currently by about 12 hospitals in the United Kingdom. So I've kind of preloaded an example here. Um, to get things started. And this is an example from a particular hospital in London um, with medicine, uh, general medicine data. So I've opened up the uh, scenario. Uh, the first thing is the specialties and here I've just got one specialty called medicine but I could have a whole range of specialties and it's just a label so I can call these whatever I like. Having created a specialty I then need to define the beds. This is where the patients actually stay and in fact they're called care units because they could be a bed but it could also be a trolley for example a, day, a daycare unit. Um, in medicine I've only defined one um, care unit. I could again have any number of care units reflecting different wards or different uh, day case units. In this particular um, inpatient beds unit I've got uh, 330 beds um, to start with and we'll see what happens as I experiment with, with that later. So it's quite a big uh, care unit in a large hospital for medical patients. And finally, the patients themselves who use those beds, uh, and I've broken it down into emergency elective and day case at the highest level. And under the medical patients, I've got information here about the emergency patients who arrive. I've got information about their arrival profile. Uh, and this information has all come across automatically preloaded from Apollo, which is another piece of software, which I've got another video on, which shows you how you links to your database. Um, the information that's come across shows the uh, a profile of arrivals for those uh, 15,000 or so patients uh, who are expected to arrive over the next year. And uh, it follows the same profile of patterns which we observed last year, but of course we can, we can change these and we'll come back to that later. Likewise, uh, daily profiles um, of when they come in over the week to reflect the variability and the time dependency of arrivals and even within shift of the day, the three shifts of the day, early, late and night shift show some um, pattern of arrivals. Once we've uh, simulated the people arriving, the patients arriving, we need to know how long they're going to stay and again that's sampled from a distribution which has come <coughs> from Apollo but again it could be uh, manually entered here. Uh, it has been shown that the best distribution to fit the length of stay for emergency patients in this particular hospital and data set was a Weibull distribution with the given parameters there. But again, this could be changed for a number of dis different distributions. And the last thing I'm just going to briefly mention is the care unit priority list. This is effectively what a bed manager would do. As an emergency medical patient in this example arrives, uh, you have to find a suitable place for them to go. There's only the one medical bed pool here, which is their first choice. But had I had different specialty bed pools, for example, surgical beds or orthopedic beds, I could have, again, had different priorities as a first choice or second choice or third choice destination. And again, I have similar information I'm not going to go through, but for electives, about their arrival profile and length of stay. So I'm going to run this model. I've set up the parameters. I'm not going to show you those, but I've run it for, set it up to run for one year, although I could run it for less or more if I wish. Uh, so it's going to simulate now 15,000 patients, those 15,000 or so patients, arriving throughout the whole year, shift by shift, and it's keeping track of the number of beds occupied, patients waiting to try and get beds, and it's going to give me some results at the end. If I look at the graph to start with, this shows the number of beds in um, occupancy, occupied beds over time. You can see there's some time dependent profile here to reflect the busy winter months and then it flattens out over the summer. I can drill down if I want to by day of the week or month of the year. Um, at the highest level for medical specialties, uh, the medical specialty, the occupancy overall is 64%, which is fairly low. Um, the, result in, um, the result of that is actually that no one ever not, doesn't get a bed. There's 0% transfer rates or deferral rate, which basically means that everybody who wanted to get a bed got one of those 330 beds. Um, that's typically obviously not realistic because in fact this particular hospital doesn't have uh, 330 beds. It has 230 beds. So I'm going to go back to my, my binnacle beds uh, pool. I'm going to change the number of beds to 230. And notice I could change it anywhere I want in a scenario sense. I could have less beds or more beds at different times of the year, by month or by day of the week. Sometimes beds, for example, are walled shut down at weekends. I can do any of those configurations, but I'm going to have 230 beds open every day of the year. 
I'm going to say yes. I'm going to rerun that same scenario of my 15,000 or so patients, but now with the 100 less beds, this actually now reflects more like the uh, reality of this particular um, hospital. And if I look at the results now, again I show you the bed graph, you can see pretty much flat lines in the winter months which indicate straight away to me that the beds are always full for winter and then in the summer when the demand is less um, it fluctuates around about 180 to 200 beds. Um, if I look at the overall statistics, my occupancy has gone up from the 60s to nearly um, high 80s. The consequence of that going down here is if I look at this bottom one for example here, 700 patients, 700 emergency patients couldn't find a bed and that's about 5% of all my admissions had to be transferred to another hospital or they might be put into another specialty care unit such as orthopaedics and surgery which of course in turn has a knock-on effect uh, and can cause bottlenecks in other parts of the system. And I can drill down to look at that uh, occupancy uh, by the different times of the year so I can see for example the occupancy in January is more like 97% in February it's 100% so the beds were completely busy throughout February, March and uh, nearly April as we saw in the graph. So the benefit of this model then where it really comes into to play is, is the scenario capability so one might say for example well actually uh, what happens next year um, if we have less beds or more beds or what happens, for example, if we have uh, different patients coming in or more patients. So this was last year's um, predicted uh, arrival profile. But what happens, for example, if the number of patients goes up to uh, 16,000 patients? Uh, we can uh, play around with that. We could also, for example, if you wanted to, play around with different daily profiles. I can start to tweak profiles, less in January, more in January, whatever. But let's go up to 16,000 patients. Uh, run that scenario and what we'd expect to see of course is more patients, the same number of beds, so I'd expect to see a higher occupancy and even more people being transferred or outlied, um, refused admission because of no bed being available. So let's see what the um, model tells us. So again I look at my graph even worse, flat lining for a long period of time, fluctuations around the summer, but of course even now perhaps not uh, higher occupancy than what it was before. My occupancy now overall is 91%. That masks of course a lot of variation by the months. The bad news is you know, over 1,000 patients now could, be, could expect to not find a bed at any one particular time, or 7% of my total admissions into me medicine have to be uh, transferred or, or outlied. But let's, for example, say as hospitals might do, that actually we can perhaps um, live with that extra demand, but we might try to discharge people um, in a more efficient way uh, So we look at length of stay. And let's, for example, say that we could actually, we anticipate some sort of program which actually could, say, take 15% off everyone's length of stay. We might have benchmarked our length of stay compared to other hospitals of a similar nature and we feel that perhaps our length of stay is, t is too long and so we could actually decrease that. So now what happens in the model is that everyone is sampled their length of stay distribution as before from a Weibull distribution but we shave 15% of that length of stay in this scenario and we can do anything we like, increase or decrease that as a, as a scenario. So I'm going to say yes to that. So I've got my 16,000 patients now coming through. I'm going to rerun that with a 230 bed still uh, but now I've got a length of stay reduction of 15% for my medical emergencies. And straight away I noticed my occupancy is coming down slightly over the year, as I'd expect. In fact, my occupancy has come down from 90% down to 83%, if I can scroll down here. I'm now back down to only 200 or 300 transfers, a much more comfortable 1.7%. So you can see that 15% reduction length of stay has made a real difference, even if I had to live with the extra 1,000 patients to 16,000 patients. So that's the benefit of this tool. You can really play around in scenario sense against beds, occupancy, and transfer rates to see the relationship, which actually is quite, um, quite tricky and non-trivial. Typically, occupancy... Um, is a linear relationship to number of beds, but the transfer rate is a non-linear relationship and uh, needs to be understood. The final thing I'm going to show very briefly is actually this tool also has a workforce functionality. Um, 
I'm just going to add a particular grade of our start staff called nurse. I can, I can explore any workforce. And within nurse, I'm just going to have one grade of nurse, a grade A nurse. Again, this is just a label, and I can have any number I like. I'm going to apply that. In terms of working out the workforce relationships between beds and staff, there are two main methods um, in use. Acuity method, which is a bit more complex, which reflects how uh, the, the mm. dependency of workforce changes over time as a patient uh, recovers. But a more simple method, which I'm just going to show for the purposes of this demonstration, is the occupied bed method, which is a simple ratio of care. In this example, the default values are five. So for, it means for every five patients on the ward, I need one grade A nurse to, to care for those five patients. Um, of course, it's not uh, in reality, maybe at night time, um, maybe the level of care is a different care as the patients are mostly sleeping. So for example, I need say only one to 10 ratio at night time and one to five in the daytime. But I can change these numbers and I can change them by different specialties or by different grade of nurse. There's also an HR function I'll just uh, show you briefly. Uh, this, uh, again, is all user-defined parameters, and these are just based on some standard numbers from the literature, which shows that 20% of the year uh, the nurses are on some sort of leave, either sick leave or, or absence leave or holiday, um, and they work 37 and a half hours um, per, per standard um, in this particular hospital. But I can come back and change that, which I will. So I okay that. I rerun exactly the same model with just now the occupied bed method. So to recap, it's the same 16,000 or so patients, the same 230 beds with this 15% reduction in length of stay. And now what I'm doing is trying to calculate the corresponding workforce required of grade A nurses, at least, to care for those patients. If I look at my workforce statistics, it says that I need 38 grade A nurses at early and late shift, but half the number at night time. Of course, that's reflected by the change in ratio. And my total HR function is 142 nurses, based on those information I, I gave you earlier on. So that's given you a snapshot of um, the kind of tool and how it can be used. I'm happy to uh, take any queries, of course, uh, if you want to get in touch with me. My web address is www.profpaulharper.com.